All right, welcome back to my Arc Ascended Basic series. Today we're going to do a little creature spotlight on the Moss Chops here. Now, these are a great early game tame for a couple of reasons. You can ride them with no saddle, as you can see here, and they're noticeably faster than running around on foot. Plus, they're great at harvesting berries. You just come over here and munch on your bushes and you get more berries. And you get a lot of fiber from it, too. Look at all that fiber buildup. Lots of different berries. Way faster than harvesting by hand. And also, you can set them to wander around your base. And as long as there's like some trees and bushes and everything around, then they'll gather berries, thatch, and fiber all on their own. So you can just ignore them, come back to them every couple of arc days and, and get some stuff. And they also have special harvesting skill points that you can apply here in the menu, the harvesting levels where you can get them to har get bonus harvesting items every time they harvest something that can drop one of these items. It's important that the thing you're trying to harvest can drop the item that you're giving it points for. Because, like, like, sap, completely useless right now. The island has nothing that can drop sap for you. Like, you can't harvest the redwoods, so you can't, you can't get it. It's, it's not going to work until Scorched Earth and the Joshua Trees. And then, like, Leech Blood... It can come from, on the island, the leech blood can come from uh, leeches, obviously. <laughs> I think it's only leeches on the island, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's on the island, it's only leeches. And then uh, on the later maps, death worms and lampreys will be able to drop it. Organic polymer, that's an easy one on the island. The penguins, the caracou up in the north. And uh, I think the Hesperonis, yeah, the Hesperonis can also drop uh, organic polymer. And then later maps, the Mantis and the Carquinos, that giant, giant crab thing on uh, Aberration. It might be on other maps too, I'm not sure. Uh, rare Flower comes from the plants around the swamp that can drop rare flowers. Same with Rare Mushrooms. Uh, you can set it to Wander. Like if it's wandering in that area, you'll get that stuff for free, like over time for free, just by having Wander. But like, remember, it's a swamp. It's dangerous. If you just let them wander out in the swamp, they might get eaten by a Sarko. The raw prime meat, it's got to be anything that can drop prime meat, like a, a Rex or a baby. I, th I think Carnos can drop prime meat. <laughs> Just uh, things that can normally drop prime meat, they can get more prime meat out of. The prime fish meat, that's that's one that is probably just best avoided completely. Unless you are going to be some reason taking your guy out to the ocean a lot and harvesting lead Sithicus. Lead Sithis? Sithis. Lead, lead Sithis? Sith... I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. The giant whale thing that eats your raft. <laughs> like, that's the only thing that they can actually get raw prime fish meat from. They won't get it from megalodons or any other, anything else in the in the, in the the sea. They won't get prime meat from. Only the lead Sithicus. Lead Sithis. And yeah, that's that's all their, their harvesting points. I usually just go straight flowers and mushrooms pretty evenly. Because those are the only two things that I really need... I'm ever gonna want to deliberately harvest that these guys can help. Leech blood, like once I'm caving, you have you have more than enough of that. And at that point in the game, I'll have an Argentavis where I'll be getting all my prime meat from. I'll just scour things with that. And then the uh, the next best thing, or really maybe even the best thing for the long term of the game of your game your playthrough, is uh, if you can find a female. That I oh I have a female right here actually. Lay an egg, will you? No? Alright. They won't lay an egg on demand. But, they can drop a large egg, which can be used for a superior kibble. And, once you're ready for kibble, having superior is pretty nice. Like, once you're into the late game and you're breeding things, you're going to want to have every single kibble on hand, every single prime meat, every prime jerky, raw raw prime, cooked prime. Like you're just going to want to have a fridge with everything in it, if you can. Because, there's no cryopods. So you won't be able to pick something up and then change what it wants. Like, oh, it doesn't want to go for a walk. It wants this thing I don't have. But well, you got to have the thing on hand if you want the imprint to work now. At least until cryopods are reintroduced at whatever map they came in on. So it can be a real good idea to get a breeding pair and just start saving those eggs up as quick as you can. There's an egg from my one of my pteranodons. The bigger stockpile you have, the more kibble you can make once you're ready for it. Uh -huh. Now these guys are a passive tame. We came out, we found one out here in the wild. So what you want to do, like they're, 
they're all pretty docile unless you piss them off or like punch their baby or something. You can just walk right up on them. So just get close to them, find out what they want. This guy wants a Tento Berry. We got Tento Berry. So you just put that in your last slot down here, your zero slot. Get up behind them and press E. And there you go. If they're low enough level, enjoy your new uh, Moss Chops. If they're high enough level, they might run around some more and you gotta do it again. Just wait until they're hungry again. And now, we run back. Uh, here's a list of all the uh, the foods, the potential foods that they might require. And you'll notice some of these are not early game foods. So it's entirely possible that you just don't have what you need to tame it. The higher level they are, the more likely they are to have a, a food you don't have in the early game. But if you just keep your eyes peeled, uh, you'll definitely find one or more that will accept something like a berry or raw meat, something that you have readily at hand. And as we try and get this guy home, we'll close out the video with the explorer note read by none other than the island's premier biologist, Helena Walker. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and remember, if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out, it helps the video get seen by more people. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more great content coming out every week. And without further ado, here is Helena Walker. Moss chop Cebu mutante in the wild is a lazy, cowardly creature that typically lives in the island's forests, primarily making its home among the great redwoods of the western regions. It survives by being extremely flexible in its eating habits and completely averse to fighting. It never starves, since it can eat just about anything. It runs at the slightest provocation, but is still often preyed upon. What makes moss chops particularly interesting is what it can be trained to do with its eating habits. With a versatile palate and tough teeth, moss chops can be tamed for a unique ability. Over time, it can be accurately taught exactly which things to know, increasing the likelihood of harvesting the specific resource its master desires. For example, teach it to prioritize chewing prime meat and prime meat will be easier to harvest from the flesh it consumes. Likewise for rare plants' materials, and so forth. Just don't expect moss chops to protect you, though. Even after taming, it will quickly flee when enemies are nearby. Regardless of being fed well, increasing its strength, or how much affection you shower on it, moss chops retains its inherent cowardly nature. Its lack of combat might deter the use of this companion, but the ability to ride moss chops while making use of its diverse harvesting is a rare treat. 